Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining MHPA for our weekly webinar series. Before we get started, I would like to remind our attendees that today's webinar is in listen-only mode. If you have any questions throughout the webinar, please enter them in the Q&A section located at the right side of your screen. Our presenters will address questions at the end of their presentation. I would like to welcome and thank MHPA's Business Associate Member Conduent for being today's webinar leader. Conduent is the leading world's largest provider of diversified business process services with leading capabilities in transaction processing, automation, analytics, and consistent constituent experience. They work with both government and commercial customers in assisting them to deliver quality services to people they serve. Conduent manages interactions with patients and the insured for a significant portion of the U.S. healthcare industry. We're the they are the customer interface for large segments of technology of the technology industry, and they're the operational and processing partner of choice for public transportation systems around the world. Whether it's digital payments, claims processing, benefit administration, automated tolling, customer care, and distributed learning, Conduit manages and modernizes these interactions to create value for both our, their clients and their constituents. Today's webinar is entitled Claims Management Experience and Other Innovative Solutions for Managed Care Organizations. Thanks to Triple AIM, Shared Saving and Value-Based Care Initiatives, plans and providers are striving to fully ca capture risk in order to improve the health of their overall population. The strategy is to use data, clinical, and socioeconomic to find patients at risk who would benefit from earlier and appropriate interventions. Fully Capturing the disease burden of a member population as early as possible can help determine which clinical and care management interventions can be successful in a value-based environment. Due to the outdated legacy systems and common administrative lapses, claims processing remains a major pain point for both health plans in today's digital age where rapid response and accurate claims disbursement are key. Both small and large health plans are seeking help to modernize their payment practices in order to adapt and innovate for value and member satisfaction. Health plans need accurate, secure, and standardized data to improve business planning and ultimately the member's experience. They will talk about how the world of claims processing in the evolving business and how partnering with a third-party administrator can help health plans reduce waste and improve efficiencies, enhance provider and member experiences, and expand within their markets. Today's presenters are Susan Shirley, Director, Operations TPA Solutions for Conduent, Ann Clement, Director, TPA Solutions for Conduent, Todd Berkeley, Vice President of Benefit Wallet, and Philip McCauley, Director, Growth Initiatives with Conduent. So without further ado, I'll let Susan take it away. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, I am Susan Shirley. I'm the Director of TPA Operations with Conduent, and certainly I'd like to thank everybody for taking some time out of their busy day um, to join us today to talk about some solutions within the, the health plan TPA space. So having said that, I'll, I will dive right in. Um, who we are, I think everyone knows who Conduent is in this space, but if you don't, I'd like to talk about it a little bit. We often like to call ourselves a multi-billion dollar, dollar startup company. Um, Conduit formed at the beginning of 2017, but we've been in existence for many years um, in one version or another and have upwards of 40 years of claims processing experience within the healthcare space. Um, in total, we have over 85,000 employees worldwide, and of those employees, 25,000 are devoted to healthcare. Um, this is something that we do every day from receiving the claim in the mail or via an EDI clearinghouse all the way through to adjudication, check run, um, post-payment review, provider integrity, all of, of the full suite of services are what we provide. Um, one thing that we certainly are is a digital transformation company. Uh, we like to look at processes that are antiquated or outdated or manual and see what we can do to automate them and bring innovation into the space. Um, for those of us who have been in the healthcare administration space for a long time, um, we've seen uh, how we process claims evolve um, from doing things on paper, looking up edits in a, a hard copy manual on your desk, 
to very robust claims processing systems that have very flexible rules-based engines um, that process claims, what we call auto adjudication or first pass, um, with very, very high accuracy rate. So what we look to do is adopt the technology as we can, align the people in the processes um, accordingly to make sure that you as a health plan get the most value and that your constituents, your members and providers get the value that they're looking for. Um, that gives you more time to look at your analytics and to strategize about where you as a health plan want to go in the future. Um, we know today's uh, member and provider is a lot more sophisticated than they were even 5, 10, 15 years ago. Um, and people are looking for that value-based health care that we were talking about. So this gives you a little bit of a flavor of who we are as conduit and, and, and where we are within the healthcare space. Something that we wanted to talk about specifically today are some of the challenges that we see within the claims processing space. Um, as a health plan, claims processing is the crux of what you do. If you don't get that right, everything else uh, on the periphery suffers as a result. So some of the things that we've seen um, within this space is that we have outdated systems. Um, you may have a mainframe system even that's 25, 30, even more years older uh, that you're still working with. And we know that they're not as flexible as the newer systems are. They don't uh, configure the rules very quickly. Um, and sometimes this can result in overpayments and incorrect payments. Um, it definitely creates a need to pin claims for a person to look at manually in order to resolve. And we always know any time a person has to manually touch a claim, it not only costs you money, but it also introduces risk into that process where you may see an error in the ultimate adjudication of the claim. Toward that end, we've seen plans uh, come together and sometimes instead of doing a complete technology replacement, which we know is huge in scope, they'd like to bring on, uh, maybe it's a macro running in the background on a, a mainframe to process a claim that you know you're going to do exactly the same thing to every time when that person pulls it up. They're going to press button one, two, three and let it go. Maybe you put something in the background to do that. But sometimes these uh, systems can get out of sync. Um, it can, maybe you have an edit that you put in place that breaks a, a macro that you have in the background because there's no comprehensive view into everything you've got going on. So these inefficiencies certainly can lengthen your processing time and, again, uh, add to more inaccurate payments, which obviously costs us all money. And then lastly, we certainly, you know, smaller plans seem to have this problem more than larger ones, but even in 2018, we still see people clinging to paper. Um, you know, we have so many different uh, technological ways to submit a claim. You can do it via web portal, obviously, electronic data interchange through our HIPAA-compliant clearinghouses and gateways is the preferred method, but we still see them coming in on paper, um, which means that they have to be dealt with in the mailroom, they have to be prepped for scanning, scanned, imaged, data entered, data perfected, and then sent into the adjudication system where they often uh, post more edits. So something that we certainly like to do is introduce a of what we'll call a Go Green campaign and some of the health plans and use your, your provider outreach uh, resources to make sure that you drive the point home to your providers that the more they submit electronically, um, the faster their claims get processed and the more accurately they get processed. Um, Ann, I don't know if you had any thoughts around that. Um, yeah, thanks, Susan. Um, my name's Ann Clements. I'm the Director of uh, Solutions, TPA Solutions for Conduent. And I just wanted to um, add that it's uh, you know, it's completely understandable why health plans might not be quick to replace a uh, legacy claim system. I think anybody um, on the call who's been through an implementation of this magnitude knows what it's like, that typically it can be a multi-year, multi-million dollar undertaking um, and cause a great deal of headache. So it's perfectly understandable that when, when plans aren't eager to go through all that again. It also makes sense that um, you know, the approach that's taken is adding on a smaller, more affordable piece of technology in an attempt to modernize um, the system. But what happens, as Susan said, when the pieces don't quite fit together or a smaller piece of technology that you add on doesn't actually do what it claims to do is that you end up with a Frankenstein of a solution. Um, and so in a little bit, we'll talk some more about how you can, um, you know, approach this maybe a little more um, carefully make a little more smarter decisions on, on what you add on um, so that it's successful. I'll give it back to Susan. Thanks, Ann. Appreciate that. So 
something obviously that we're driving towards and living in currently is a new claims landscape. Um, we we really gone are the days where you're you're trying to put things together to make a comprehensive solution. Um, whether small or large, plans have the ultimate goal of retaining your members, growing your members, um, increasing your levels of satisfaction. And something that really is key within that landscape is digital transformation. Um, it perfectly aligns with what Conduit is as a company, what our philosophy is moving forward, and it's something that we really try to infuse with all of our clients. Um, we need to look towards online, real-time interactions immediate responses, and a really a comprehensive sort of a soup to nut uh, user experience. We, we call that a one-stop shop philosophy. Um, our newer, very flexible systems definitely support the provider's ability to verify their member eligibility, they can submit a claim, they can submit an inquiry, they can facilitate adjustments, they can do all of this via their computer. They don't have to pick up a phone and call a contact center, which we really like to be our last resort of engagement, if possible. Um, people prefer an online chat. They prefer self-service and their ability to go in and see what's happening with their claim um, from the beginning to the end of adjudication without having to pick up that phone and ask somebody. Um, this drives your satisfaction, and we see that satisfaction helps drive your retention. Um, Today's member, as we said earlier, is a lot more sophisticated than they were even five years ago. Um, access to information is immediate. Um, people want value-based coverage that they feel is individualized to them and helps them reach their personal health goals. Um, if someone has diabetes and they feel that their ultimate health is dependent upon their ability to access providers and to access their medicine that's integral into maintaining their health. They want to feel that individualized service. Um, when they log in, they want to see a, a landscape that's easy to navigate for them, and they want it to be a transparent process. We all know in the past, healthcare claims administration has been somewhat of a complicated um, thing that we do, if you will, and it's difficult for the layman to understand exactly what's going on. And so today's end user, today's member, wants to know what's happening with their claim, and they want to understand how the benefits are being applied. So that intuitive, real-time interaction is really key in that. Um, providers, we think, want what they've always want, wanted, which is to have their claims paid fast and right the first time. Um, they don't want to have to figure out what's going on with the claim. If they submitted it appropriately with all the right codes on it, all the documentation, their member's eligible, they want that claim to process quickly within 10 to 15 days is what we've seen. Any longer than that, 30 days, providers start getting antsy. They want to see what's happened with it. Why is it pended in your system? What else do you need from me to help adjudicate that claim? Um, they don't want to see claims adjusted because then that makes things more complicated for them on their end. So. Newer systems, more flexible rules engines, real-time transactions, these all come together to form sort of what we call a circle of care. Um, with the member and the provider at the, at the middle of that circle, um, we like to see our health plans, plans leveraging their technology uh, to give the kind of value base that we're looking for. Um, retention being the ultimate goal, we know that value, when a person feels value and understands value, both in how important they are to you and how efficiently you're handling their claim, uh, that will breed loyalty to your plan. Um, and it, it may seem that technology isn't something that drives loyalty, but it most certainly does, especially within today's environment. And I don't know if maybe you wanted to add a little bit on that as well. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to say that when you when you look at um, where the industry is moving technology-wise, um, as, uh, especially um, as well as how quickly it's moving in that duration, direction, particularly around digitalization, the discrepancy between the last slide we looked at and this slide, or uh, the last slide representing where many health plans are today, and this slide representing um, you know where they need to be heading. Um, it, it can be very daunting, um, and so that's what we're going to talk about next: is how we can we can help you with that process. Thanks, Anne. Yes, we are here to help, um, and we want to help you. Whether you're a small plan with a smaller operation and what may feel like a small problem, um, maybe you've got return mail issues that you need help with. That's something we can help you with. We have technology we can put in and around that. Or you're a very large plan and you 
are looking to get rid of that outdated mainframe system that you have and you want to do um, a complete technology replacement, as painful as it may be, the return on that investment is um, worth it, obviously, on the back end because you've got all those things, those good bells and whistles and retention and happy members that we talked about. So some of the things that we look at immediately as soon as we engage is look at ways to reduce or eliminate your paper. Um, you know, we talked about at the outset how important it is to drive providers away from submitting paper claims simply because they're, they're costly. They're costly for the provider, for the plan. Um, they take longer to process. They're more difficult to process. They cause more edits and all around not what we want to have. So let's try to have that electronic delivery adopted by all the providers within your network. Find solutions to fit your need. Um, maybe you don't want to do a complete technology replacement, but you do see opportunities to maybe bring some automation into your process. Um, we, we do have those wraparound technologies that we can bring. And the way that we deploy them is very methodical, very meaningful, and strategic. And something that we don't do is um, end up with a cobbled together system, which is what Ann mentioned as the Frankenstein appropriate for Halloween. Um, we don't build Frankenstein systems. We certainly make sure that the things that we put on top of or around legacy systems um, integrate seamlessly. We make sure that they stay in lockstep. Any changes that are made, obviously, would go through a board um, to be reviewed and approved prior to implementation. We want to look to adopt technologies that integrate our data across the members and providers um, to give you as a health plan time to focus on the, the analytics and focus on the data because that's really where uh, your bread and butter is. Um, if you don't have to worry about the operational aspect of it, and by operational I mean uh, your claims processing and things that go in and around that, um, whether it's mailroom data entry, adjustments, appeals, medical review, people answering the phone, um, any of those operational pieces, as long as those become um, table stakes and a given, then that gives you as the plan a lot more time and resources to devote uh, into analyzing your data. Uh, looking at your analytics, reviewing the population health statistics that you have as a plan to see where you need to put your energy. Um, do you need to focus more on member retention or do you need to put more focus on provider outreach? Or is it an even mix of both? Um, something that these technologies and this data will give to you is the insight into that environment so you know where to make your decisions um, in a more informed way. Integrated ecosystems, when you have uh, contact center systems that talk to claim systems, that talk to imaging systems, that um, feed reports, it, things go so smoothly. Um, it's that environment, like I said, where plans are looking at the data that comes in and around their systems instead of worrying about, oh gosh, we've got to make sure that we meet the service level agreement for timeliness for claims processing. That becomes a non-issue because you, of course, you're going to meet the timeliness for claims processing because you, you have systems in place and people in place to support it. Um, so what we see uh, is that when we get to this maturity level, members and providers um, really respond to market demands and health plans are able to respond more efficiently. And did you have any other um, comments you wanted to make around this? Uh, the only thing that I wanted to add, Susan, was that um, just to reference back to um, my comment about, um, you know, figuring out smart things to add on to your to your legacy system or smart ways to address some of your processes that aren't working particularly efficiently for you. Um, as Susan said, one of the very best things to do first is robotic process automation. Anything that's manual can be automated. Um, and we have lots of different ways of doing it. We can, you know, help you identify um, even probably it, it, things that you had not thought about before that are slowing down your process or creating the need for uh, human touch on a claim that we can eliminate. Um, so I just wanted to, to emphasize that, you know, if you're kind of looking at, a, at an old technology um, at your health plan and you're not sure where to start at all, automation is always a great place to start. Thanks, Ann. That's, that's a great point. Uh, you know, to emphasize no matter how small the process is, if it's something that's causing you pain and a person is having to do it and you really need that person to focus on something else, um, that's always a good place to start, even if you feel like, oh, there's no way we can automate this. Likely there is, or there's a way that we could streamline, uh, streamline or re-engineer the process to make more sense for you. Um, 
Very good. So this particular slide gives sort of a high level um, view of all the different parts that come together to form the healthcare ecosystem at Conduit. Uh, you can see the claim services integration piece over on the side. Um, you've got provider member engagement. Obviously, we have a, a gateway that we use for EDI transactions that we're happy to talk to anyone about who wants to encourage more providers to adopt electronic claim submission. Um, then within the processing piece, pricing adjudication, authorization, um, value-based payments, we do capitated payments, any kind of a claim processing piece that, that can be done, we currently do today. Um, and then obviously the reports are the big deal because you want to be able to analyze that data. Um, security and compliance, clinical management, provider and network management, billing and finance. If it is a piece of work or business that comes in and around your health plan, um, we're ready to help you with it. We're, help you, we're ready to help you transform it into something that's more meaningful to you and to a digital experience for both the folks inside your health plan and certainly for your members and your providers. Um, we've seen in the past and we'll continue to see that this sort of transformation and engagement just drives retention, drives satisfaction, and enables the plan to be more profitable on the whole. Um, I certainly appreciate your time. As I said, if anyone has any questions about this particular uh, piece of, of business that we've talked about and these solutions, certainly happy to entertain those now or at the end of the presentation. Hey, hey Susan, I wanted to just give a little bit more insight into a couple of the clients that we provide. Oh, great. Services. Um, Thank you, Ann. And yeah, sure. So I think that that might help folks be able to envision a little better um, how we approach uh, approach this. Um, one of the clients that we have is a, a medical health plan um, has about approximately 200,000 members, and we provide to them end-to-end uh, -end TPA services. So we provide everything that you see on this slide here, um, including implementing and supporting their claim system and providing additional technology and uh, BPO services to meet all of their business needs. Um, it is a California health plan, as I said, but, but one of the things that we've done is place most of their operations in a low-cost domestic center, um, and uh, you know, this saves them a, a lot of cost on overhead. Um, and so is, uh, it's still, everything's still on shore, so it meets the the Medicaid requirements of things being onshore, but it is of much less cost to them. Um, this particular client we've worked with since 2011, um, and so the technology that we're offering them is in, is in need of some refresh. So right now what we're doing is implementing a, um, a new claim system for them, which includes a uh, brand new member and provider portal. And it also um, includes some automation. Um, one of the things that is uh, one of our best automations, I think, is, is what we call call simplification. It's a, a tool that we uh, can implement in your call center. Uh, it brings in information from all of the various systems that you depend on, whether it's your claim system, your eligibility system, whatever uh, your uh, image repository, whatever systems that you need to pull data from, it can be, they can all be tied in through this one uh, call simplification system and, and by just touching an icon on the screen, your agents can access the information they need. It, it really reduces um, call time and increases customer satisfaction. Uh, another client that we have has contracted with us to um, provide front-end services and claims adjudication. So what we're, we're doing for them is um, OCR uh, and scanning of their claims. And this is being done domestically, because um, again, because of certain requirements uh, that the health plan has. Um, and then the data entry and claims processing is going to be done offshore. Um, that will help reduce costs. They have asked us to work with some of their technologies that they're not ready to replace, but they do have a lot of manual processes that we, we really want to help them streamline. Um, so what we're going to be doing is just adding on some additional uh, technology around their front-end workflow tool that they wanted to keep so that we can eliminate a lot of this manual stuff. 
Um, and then we're also going to be using their uh, legacy claim system for the data entry and claims processing. Um, but just to give you an idea of how focused the work is that this particular client has asked us to do, we are only processing two types of claims for them. And these, where these two types of claims uh, are encountered, um, the health plan is the secondary payer. But this was an area that they identified as a pain point for them, and they came to us to ask for assistance, and, and we've been able to provide that. Um, then lastly, I just wanted to tell you about another Medi-Cal uh, plan that we have that experienced um, a sustained spike in out-of-area UM reviews uh, that they encountered. Um, and, and they made the decision that instead of uh, investing in the time and the, the cost of onboarding and training new clinical staff, that they would outsource the new clinical staff to us. Um, and uh, and the, um, the type of reviews that we do are only the out-of-area reviews. So, so we, have, we have brought on board very quickly two um, RNs for them. Um, they're remote. Um, and um, they handle about 320 out-of-area case reviews per month. Um, it's, you know, very um, focused, again, a uh, bit of business, um, and uh, it's, it's worked out well. So I guess the, the message from this is that really there's no job too big or too small. If it's a, a pain point of yours and, and, you know, you're not happy with, you um, your ability to meet the, meet a particular need, business need, you know, reach out. It's it's certainly um, it's exactly what we're here to do. So that's it. I'll send it back to you. Thanks, Anne. I appreciate that. It's always helpful to talk about what it looks like in real life, <laughs> and we do this every day in real life. Um, and those case studies and examples that she talked about are actually going on right now. Um, and I think it's a great point that there's no job too big or too small. Um, we've got a solution that we can tailor to fit your need. So we certainly appreciate that, and we'll look forward to any other questions at the end. Having said that, um, I'm joined today by my colleagues on the benefit wallet side, and I would like to hand it over to them um, sure. at this point. Yeah, do, just one do, we wanna, uh, do we want to pause for questions? I don't know if there's any questions uh, out there in queue uh, before we shift gears. But, uh, if not, I can uh, jump right in here. Let me, uh... There we go. Great. Well, that was a, a very good overview of what, of what we do for uh, health plans here at Conduit. And I want to kind of shift gears into a, an area that's related and um, that is a, actually an emerging uh, growth opportunity for health plans and states in the Medicaid space and um, we'll talk a little bit about Benefit Wallet, what we do just primarily in the commercial space, but it's very, very relevant uh, to an expansion of, uh, that some states are doing to uh, add a uh, health savings-like uh, offering to their Medicaid uh, 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 offerings in the state. Uh, Indiana offered something called Healthy Indiana as a demonstration project a few years ago had some very good success. A number of states are following suit. Well, probably 20 plus states are thinking about going this direction. And uh, our benefit wallet, um, health savings account and uh, notional account, we do uh, flexible spending accounts, uh, health reimbursement accounts, incentive accounts, et cetera, that have a uh, capability that could really help a uh, health plan uh, or state government directly uh, here we're talking about health plans, MCOs, uh, 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 helping out the state, which is often the, the structure that they work with, to be able to, to spool this up and take some learnings that we've had in the health savings account space and apply them into a more successful program for that state Medicaid program. So, uh, so I run the Benefit Wallet uh, uh, division here at Conduit. We were a pioneer in this space back in 2004, uh, which was right when the law passed to make a health savings account uh, uh, available nationwide. I also have uh, Phil McCauley on the line with me uh, who manages uh, our, uh, our uh, forays into the public sector space so, uh, uh, in, in this area. But we have been a, a, a large player in this space for many, many years. Most of our sales have actually come through health plans. So we may be working with some of your 
colleagues in the product area where they're offering a high deductible health plan um, that qualifies for an HSA. They may use us as one of the vendors uh, to offer the HSA to those people, to those employers and their employees who choose the high deductible health plan. So uh, we have a very, very flexible platform. Um, we, um, when we spun out uh, into this new company called Conduit, this new $6 billion startup, uh, it has actually been a, a, a time of unprecedented growth and investment for the Benefit Wallet uh, division. We've uh, really been sinking a lot of money into new systems, into, into new people, and uh, really reinvigorating this business, which has been a growth business for us for many years. And uh, so in the last couple of years, we have uh, updated our portals, updated mobile apps, uh, uh, issued uh, debit cards with uh, security, um, uh, with chip-based security. We're the first major player to have all of our cards include uh, chip-based uh, chip uh, security. We'll talk a little bit about that. And so we've got lots and lots of experience in this space with over a million uh, health accounts on our books. And um, in, in this experiment that's been going on since uh, 2004, uh, really has shown some terrific results in terms of engaging people uh, through this combination of a high deductible health plan and a tax deferred account uh, to really uh, engage them in how they interface with the healthcare system. And we find that when people spend their own money, they spend it differently, they engage uh, in, in more preventive care, and some of those same aspects have uh, have come over into the Healthy Indiana programs uh, in Medicaid, which is not a pure HSA because you, you don't expose them to a high deductible health plan like you do in the commercial space. Uh, but in many cases, there is a chance to, to utilize these same tools, cards, uh, in, uh, communication programs, et cetera, to engage that population, that expansion population. This isn't geared toward the, the, uh, the, the typical uh, Medicaid populations, toward the expansion that, uh, population that's more, uh, you know, a little, little bit higher income than the rest of the Medicaid population, and also helps prepare them for the kind of plan that they may have if they get off of Medicaid and, uh, you know, go back into the commercial world and get commercial insurance, because many employers offer this kind of a plan uh, going forward. So um, well, let me get uh, go to the next slide here. So as I mentioned, we, uh, we have been investing heavily in terms of our interfaces, try to make them simple to use, very clear, very easy. Um, people are often confused in these kinds of programs or it's a little bit different than what they're used to. And so we've really spent a lot of time and energy in terms of how our, uh, how our interfaces are easy to use for the average uh, consumer and also in our education programs, which I'll talk about here in a few minutes. Um, Security is also paramount, and uh, as I mentioned, we have chip-based cards uh, that we've uh, introduced in the last uh, year, um, and we're also just constantly upgrading our security systems, and it's one of the uh, strengths that we bring to bear with, uh, you know, coming with a, a strong uh, offering technology company like, uh, like Conduit in, in terms of kind of cutting-edge services, no matter what channel you do, deal with. Uh, we are con consistently investing and staying, staying a step ahead uh, of, of the phishing and, and uh, you know, phone-based or card-based. There's a lot of the, the bad guys are getting better out there, and so we're really uh, investing heavily to stay a step ahead of them. Um, the other thing um, is that, that a, a communication is really important when you are introducing change in the way that you offer a program of this type. And uh, that's, that is true in the commercial world. I think it's even more true in the Medicaid world um, where uh, this is gonna be an unusual kind of offering. Um, but, uh, and we actually have a lot of experience in the Medicaid side of the fence as well uh, and with, uh, with educating Medicaid populations. So, uh, Conduit really brings a, a number of different capabilities to bear, both in the how we manage account, uh, how we manage education, how we work with health plans. So uh, could really be uh, invaluable for health plans as the, if they think, are thinking about responding to one of these opportunities as the various states uh, kind of spool them up. Um, in terms of education, there's obviously different steps in the process. We spend a lot of time on the front end uh, before open enrollment hits. So uh, in, in this case, once a, uh, 
uh, once an employer decides to move to a high deductible health plan, we try to work with them six to nine months ahead of time to prepare that population for the changes that are coming. Uh, certainly during that open enrollment process and the welcome kits and, and we are you know, adept at uh, bringing you know, large populations up to scale very quickly in terms of issuing cards, uh, getting the contributions into the accounts, et cetera. And then also following up year round with the right kind of messages targeted to the right kind of populations. And uh, so we do this uh, in, in spades in the, uh, in the commercial world and uh, it can really help a, uh, a vendor uh, to, to offer not just a good program, but one that's really tailored, uh, really does a good job in terms of education and helping the participant understand uh, how this works, what the advantages are for them, et cetera. Um, and uh, obviously, as we, uh, we have a, a life, what we call our life cycle program that is uh, adept at sending the right messages to the right people, understanding the demographics in that population and uh, the psychographics in terms of, you know, how they're thinking about it, where their, uh, you know, where their capabilities are, where they need, you know, re remedial help, et cetera, and sending the right messages at the right time in the program to help them take a full advantage of the, of the program that's at stake. And then finally, um, you know, just more uh, uh, content around how we send the right kind of message to the right person, whether that be based on the life stage, whether it's a young couple, a millennial, a family, whether it's an inactive or low balance person. In the case of the commercial programs, you can also invest in mutual funds inside these programs. Uh, that's generally not the case in the Medicaid uh, programs. But um, just kind of depending on the age, depending on the demographics, depending on how they think about it, um, we're very, very good at sending the right messages at the right times, either through the web, through the mobile app, or uh, through email uh, targeted programs. So um, uh, finally, just a few uh, thoughts uh, in terms of the uh, Medicaid expansion populations. Um, and how we can uh, come alongside you if you do have an opportunity in your state or the states that you operate in. Uh, we would love to talk to you about, uh, about you know, uh, how we can help you uh, formulate a program well before it gets up and running and uh, give you a leg up in terms of uh, uh, ability to win uh, business in these new, uh, new experimental areas with the Medicaid division. So. Uh, uh, the, the, the design is really, really important, and that's why uh, whether the, the plan is already fully baked in the state or is just being debated, probably better to get in there while it's being debated so that we can help uh, uh, structure that design for maximum impact. And uh, there are, it's really dependent in terms of how they set the program up, whether the state's going to run it directly or whether they're going to use MCOs. Um, whether they're going to require, in some cases, they're actually requiring a, a little bit of skin in the game from the Medicaid participants. It's usually, you know, $10 or less uh, a month, but they do find that if the uh, person does have a part, even if it's a dollar a month that they're contributing into the program, that it uh, creates more ownership, more engagement. Um, and, um, you know, there's, these programs can be somewhat complex. Um, so really helping to understand, you know, and uh, guide that to be as simple as possible and then to get ahead of it in terms of our design and, our, and any uh, IT uh, build that we need to do. Obviously, the earlier we can get uh, involved in that, the, the more effective we can be uh, for a, a, an effective launch. <clears throat> Premium costs, uh, enrollment, prog you know, can, if you get too complex, uh, it, can, it can deter people from choosing these kinds of programs. And um, so once again, getting in there early, helping to uh, shape the debate in terms of how the program can work. Uh, we have active conversations going on in probably a dozen states or more right now uh, with lawmakers, with the, uh, with the governor's office, with, uh, uh, with uh, health plans in, in those areas, really helping trying to shape the debate on these uh, programs for maximum effect. And, uh, um, and then even in the commercial world, health accounts can be somewhat confusing because people are not used to thinking about their health care and their finances together, even though if you think about it from a broad picture, I mean, the rising cost of health care is clearly affecting you know, American families. 
and uh, throwing their retirement plans off uh, off base that were already underfunded to begin with. And so there's clearly a correlation between these two things, but they're not used to having them fully connected together. But it can be a very, very powerful thing uh, with the right education and the right kind of program to help people really start thinking about their financial decisions, start asking the right kinds of questions, start interacting with the health system in a different way. Uh, can be very, very beneficial. And as I said, if you uh, set it up to where you can keep the money or spend that money on other things, like uh, for instance, in the Healthy Indiana program, one of the uh, elements is if you don't spend all the money that the state has put into that program for you uh, in a given year, you can use it the next year and can cover even things that are not covered by Medicaid, like uh, dental or vision expenses. And that can be a very powerful incentive for people who are not used to being able to control a savings account uh, with money and be able to extend some of their benefits uh, by being more judicious in terms of how they utilize the, the funds that are put in there by the state. And then uh, finally, beneficiary provider education. So it's not just the person that's the, uh, the Medicaid uh, uh, beneficiary, but it's the family, it's their doctor. Uh, lots of people that need to be educated and that's where uh, taking the capabilities, you know, from the earlier in the program of all the things we do for health plans, all the things we do for states and Medicaid programs, all the things we do around education, we can really help be a valuable partner in uh, helping you to engage in this uh, exciting new area. So with that, we will turn to questions. Do we have any uh uh, going back to the moderator, do we have any uh, questions queued up? Hello, I apologize. Um, thank you all so much for that. Um, we can definitely move into Q&A at this point. Um, so if anyone has any questions, um, again, feel free to submit um, in the right-hand corner in the chat box. And while we are um, waiting on questions, if there is anything else um, that you all would like to expand on or um, if there's anything you feel like um, to provide to be more clarification, um, so please feel free to share at this time as well. Um, I, I uh, will uh, defer to my colleague, Phil McCauley, anything that you'd like to highlight you know, while we're waiting for questions to come in? It's like you're muted on the system there. Can you hear me now? There he is. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I think one of the things I just wanted to accentuate what Todd said is the, um, the ability to get in front of it, uh, the state initiatives. Um, we have the, like many of you, um, the government affairs resources uh, to partner with you to make that happen. Uh, we've done that with some of the health plan associations at the local level, uh, not just with MHPA. Um, so your health plan associations for the most part are in state capitals and that's where I spend most of my time. So to the extent that you even as an individual plan wanna participate in that dialogue with the state payer, um, poisoning creating these types of arrangements um, for Medicaid expansion populations, we're certainly willing and eager to do that with you. Susan or Ann, any additional comments? Looks like the, no questions are coming in. So this is Susan. I'll, I'll bring up something that we didn't necessarily highlight during our discussion, and that is uh, implementation timelines. Uh, I know that implementation is sometimes a scary word uh, to health plans, specifically around large um, system implementations, but sometimes when we talk about these wraparound technologies that we can put in place, or for instance, the front end work that uh, Ann mentioned with a client that we've just started to do now where we're performing the OCR for their claims and then the data entry piece. 
Um, these don't have to be really long, difficult implementation timelines. Um, obviously, we, fo we follow project management guidelines and make sure that, that we check all the boxes as we walk down the path. But something like an OCR implementation uh, with data entry can be done within 90 to 120 days. Um, and that's from signing the contract to flipping the switch. Uh, so again, these don't have to be, you know, six, nine, 12 months. Typically, when we look at a large system implementation, we think, oh my, this could be months or oftentimes even in excess of a year um, before you get something implemented. But when we when we look at these call simplification tools, the OCR piece, um, any of the smaller wraparound pieces, we can certainly implement those within a a much shorter time frame and, and give you relief from that pain point a little bit earlier than maybe you would have anticipated. Just something I wanted to make sure everybody understood. Thanks, Susan. Well, seeing that there's no uh, questions uh, coming in, we very much appreciate everyone's time and uh, uh, and uh, stand ready for if you have questions you'd like to give us offline. How would they uh, get those questions to us? Is there a, uh, uh, going back through the MHPA uh, office? Um, definitely, you, you can definitely share your contact information um, right here on the call. And then um, as a post follow-up, if you want to send out your information and or the presentation to the attendees, you can definitely do that as well. Hey, hey, Todd, if you bring up the last page of the deck again, it has, I think, um, the contact right. info that we have to share today. All right. Sorry about that. All right. There it is. All right. Perfect. Perfect. So everyone's contact information is there. Um, I just want to thank everyone once again for joining us um, on today's webinar. Um, and we'll we'll see you on another webinar Wednesday. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.